Microphone, please. Sabinas. Coach CB says you only gave him the one day off, not two. Uh, is that accurate? And and what was the reason behind that? No, it's not accurate at all. Uh, <laughs> they had off the rest of Saturday and they had off Sunday. So that's not accurate at all. No, today we're going to do a walkthrough. So, so we were off Sunday. We practiced hard yesterday. We'll do a walkthrough today. Uh, try to tighten a few things up and uh, do a little bit of shooting. So that's basically an off day. And then, and then we'll, we'll hook up again tomorrow. You mentioned down there, and you've said a lot this season that there's another gear, another level you guys can go to. What do you have to do this week in preparation to kind of position yourselves to take that jump? Well, we need to do that. Uh, um, you know, I, th I think health plays a role in it. You know, we need we need our our two bigs healthy, uh, both David and Mitch, and and I think that David feels pretty good, and I think that Mitch has made great improvement, and hopefully he'll be close to you know, whole by, by Friday. Uh, uh, and then we, we need, you know, one, one thing about it, Remy has been, he's been kind of, uh, our lifeline, so to speak off the bench and has done great. Uh, but we haven't collectively played as well around him. I mean, it's, it's been like, he's carried us and, and we need to get, uh, probably a little bit more balance, uh, and, and, uh, from our perimeter scores in addition to Remy. So I, I think that'll make us a little bit hard to guard as well. Coach Providence, uh, an older team, a, a, a big team. Really old team. Really old team. <laughs> yeah, like all Mitch Lightfoot's out there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's, uh, how would you describe them? Do they remind you of anybody? And does it make for maybe a more thorough scout uh, playing them after they just played Creighton twice uh, in the last 10 days? Well, e even, though, uh, even though we watched the Creighton game, for us before we played Creighton, naturally, you know, we, we, we did the same with Providence, but didn't quite watch it in the same light. But yeah, I, I think we'll have a decent book on its team. Uh, uh, if I was going to say there's a team that, that uh, they kind of remind me of, it may be ours. They play four round one. Uh, they've got four guys in the game at almost all times that can stretch it. Uh, you know, if, if Remy is in the game and not Juan, that's kind of how we look. Uh, uh, even though Juan can make a shot, that's not what he, in, you know, likes to do as much. But uh, I, I see some similarities in, in their team and our team. Uh, uh, you know, they got a, they got they don't really post their their guards a lot, and we we do some, but not a lot either. Uh, uh, and they play four around one, and their their big guy is. Uh, a guy can go make a basket a lot like David can. So uh, I see I see a lot of similarities with us. Oh, uh, Bill, you said we're a different team with Remy out there. Strategically, what does that look like with him? Well, I, I think this time of year, uh, more so than than maybe maybe the second half of your conference season when you're playing a team a second time. And this time of year, where, where the teams are naturally better the further you go, uh, it's hard to get good shots off your stuff you run. It, you, you get shots off your players more than you do the stuff you run. Uh, you want to run good stuff to put your players in position to, to get a look or whatever, but very rarely do you get uh, some of the things I feel that you get during the regular season. So uh, with that being said, uh, uh, you know, Remy out there, you can run bad offense and he can just make a shot. And that's what great teams all have players like that. Uh, 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 unless you're just so ultra talented at every spot. But but uh, uh, that that's what I think it kind of comes down to this time of year is is guys jumping up there and taking a marginal shot, and making it. And and uh, we haven't really shot the ball yell I mean well yet in the tournament from three so and we didn't in the big 12 tournament as well so hopefully uh, uh we've got plenty of makes left in us uh in Chicago and, and how did you vet him he's not the first transfer you got or the first grad transfer but there's things off the court you know that you want to know about a guy and everything I hear from the players is even during his down times he's, yeah, he's great yeah yeah he's great uh uh what I thought we needed last year uh was uh a boost of speed. I, I, I really didn't feel like the team we had last year uh, was as athletic and explosive enough to to really 
make a run this year if it stayed status quo. Uh, it turned out I was kind of wrong because we are af we are fairly athletic and the guys have done pretty well when, even when Remy wasn't out there because it's the same team as last year guys minus Marcus Garrett same team for the most part so but I think the the the, the pieces have all improved and gotten better CB and Jalen and Oach have all made huge jumps and so has Juan uh, uh, but I, I think Remy gives us a chance to you know little things like getting open late game uh, uh, when a team's pressing you know, you don't have to run something to get open. Just let me go get open. You know, things like that uh, uh, just just give you a different element that 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 uh, we didn't have before that I think all teams need. Coach, uh, getting to playing in Chicago in front of a, a lot of a big KU alumni base might have some some of that energy in the room. Is that is that a factor, or is too much made of that? Or uh, you know, what are your thoughts about? Uh, playing in Chicago? Oh, well, first of all, it's, it's great for me personally. Cause I, you know, I've had a chance to play there a few times when I was in Champaign and I love the United center and, and, uh, and, and cause we used to play games there every year and played NCAA tournament there. And, and we played in the tournament there also, I think in 07, was it, uh, that we played in the United center as well. We like it there. Uh, 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 I think the fans will bring energy, uh, I gotta be real honest with you. I, I hope that they show up uh, and bring the energy. You know, uh, uh, I think uh, you know in Fort Worth we didn't really have a, a. I mean, we had fans there, but it wasn't like a real strong contingent of a, a lot of a lot of folks there. But Chicago, we have such a big alumni base, and the thing that's different about the NCAA tournament, though, if you know, uh, our alums in Chicago may not have the foresight 12 months ago to purchase tickets for this site. So there'll be a lot of tickets that's purchased that's not uh, 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 team affiliated. They're just basketball fans. And so, and then, and then the NCAA gives out, you know, 1,100, 1,200 is to whatever to every school. Then it's up to those schools and those fans to hustle. And uh, uh, I think it's, it's time for our, our fan base to hustle and get there because what you said does play a role in, in, in success. Uh, uh, we saw that in San Diego, if I'm not mistaken, with TCU in, in Arizona. That was an amazing uh, 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 TCU contingent, loud, but Arizona, I guarantee you, had two-thirds of building, and it was a home game for them. And although we can't make it a home game for us in Chicago, but we can certainly play our role to make sure that nobody has an advantage over us. Kind of speaking of, of TCU, your last week of the regular season of the Big 12 tournament, uh, you knew at the time just how good those teams were. The first two rounds of the NCAA certainly show that, that you beat some really tough teams. Yeah. Just how good do you feel, confidence level, you know, that you got through and iron sharpens iron? Well, I, 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 I do. I like our team. I, you know, we, we lost at Baylor. I, guys, I, it was a tie game under four timeout or whatever. I actually thought we played pretty well. Uh, I didn't think we played well at TCU, and uh, they handled us down there. And then coming back, uh, uh, I don't think we played particularly well in either game against TCU or Texas, but I thought we made sure the other team didn't play very well, which is obviously a huge deal. And then we, we got on a little mini roll in, in – uh, in Kansas City and, you know, played fairly well in, 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 in Fort Worth. Didn't play as well against Creighton, but I think Creighton had a lot to do with that. But, I, you know, I, I think our guys think that we're battle-tested. Uh, uh, I believe we're battle-tested. But I will tell you this, Providence thinks they're battle-tested too. I mean, the Big East is no joke as well. So uh, it'll be two good teams that have been through, had some pretty tough battles this year hooking up. Uh, it, should, it should be very competitive. Bill, Ochai is already a consensus All-American, but to be a finalist for the Naismith Trophy, I guess, can that do anything for him? What can that do for him? To be a finalist? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't think really, you know, Chris knows better than me uh, because he handles all this, the, uh, all those things with him uh, through the sports information department. But I don't see Ochai acting one bit different. I don't see him being excited if he's on a list. I wouldn't see him being down if he wasn't. I think he is focused on Kansas playing well. I, I, I really do. Uh, uh, I think sometimes when you, when you, uh, I think this time of year, uh, things like that 
can can play a positive role and give you confidence, but I also think it can add pressure sometimes because you know you, people expect you now to even perform at a level higher than what you've been performing at all year long. I don't think Oach is hung up on that at all. I, I think Oach is right here, and so and that's the best way to be. So what do you see from Providence offensively? Uh, well, like I said, Jesse, I think they're they're they're. I'm not saying personnel is exactly the same, but they're a lot like us. Uh, 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 they can they can score from all five spots. You know, basically they have five guys averaging double figures. I think they got two averaging nine nine. So that's basically all five averaging double double figures, and and uh, it looks a little bit uh, uh, like us. And then 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 they bring in a guy that can stretch it right after that. But what what I see is uh, you know it's it's uh, they want to throw it inside, but they got five guys that have all shot. Uh, between 102 and 173s or wh whatever it is, something like that. So, you know, that makes you concerned that they're all capable and willing shooters. Uh, and if, if two of those five get hot, you know, that could be eight threes right there. So, so you know, you got to do a really good job defending the arc. And your guys talked about an emphasis on spacing. Can you just – what would you like to see from your team in that regard? Well, I thought the way that I, – I thought the way that Creighton played us uh, – uh, we made the court more crowded than what it is because of uh, them being in such strong help and everybody being open that everybody just ran to the ball. To, to me, it looked like a, uh, a third grade youth recreational basketball team sometime when whoever gets the rebound, four guys go over there and try to take it from him. I mean, that's that's kind of what I thought we did at times uh, in a, on a few possessions there. So we need to we need, we need to make make opponents guard all 50 feet and, and, and then basically about, you know, 30 feet, uh, uh, 50 feet wide and about 30 feet deep, uh, uh, as opposed to just everybody playing top of the key extended, which we did that way too much the other day. Bill, they've won, uh, Providence has won, I think 11 games by five or fewer points, including Wisconsin and Tech. Is there a certain resilience that a team needs to be able to close out games? Yeah, I think so. I, I think so. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the thing you have to have is is uh, you got to have players that can make plays when when things aren't drawn up to go make plays for them. I mean, you you can't call a timeout every single possession and 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 and, uh, and go out and say we're going to get a shot from this spot and this guy's going to shoot it. There, there's no Larry Birds out there. Said so I'm going to catch it here and I'm going to turn. And I'm going to shoot it from right here. Uh, uh, and so guy, guys have to be able to go make plays and and they have multiple guys that can go make plays, especially off the bounce. And I think that's a big key. The other thing, I, I think those stats are a little bit misleading. Uh, sometimes close games, five-point games, is when you have an 11-point lead with 30 seconds left and you let it get up to four. Uh, that would be us a lot. Uh, I, I think sometimes the, the records are a little misleading. Uh, or if you're, you're down 11 with 30 left and you cut it to three, uh, you don't know how to close the game. You know, you did know how to close the game. You just waited too long. So, I, th I, th I think we can we can we can skew those stats however we want to. But in Providence's case, they've probably been involved as as many close games as anybody in the country and had as much success winning those games, which is obviously a credit to their players, but also to Ed and the staff too. I'm not talking in game Friday night when when the ball goes up, but but I think this is going to be your 14th time coaching in the Sweet 16, and this will be Ed's first. I think he did one as an assistant to it. Can that be an advantage this week leading up to that? And, and then I also want to hear just your experience with him and, and if you've crossed paths, things like that. Uh, uh, personally, uh, I would I would hope that that would be an advantage. Uh, but in my mind, it's not an advantage. In my mind is who does the best job of getting their team ready to play and, and eliminate distractions and then, you know, uh, uh, going out there and, and – and, uh, enjoying savoring the moment that that to me what it's it's more about and there's a there's a veteran coaches that are really good at it and there's first year guys that could be just as good or better than veteran coaches at it so I I, I don't think there's who knows but you know Ed Ed's I've known Ed for a while I wouldn't consider us close friends but we are close friends enough that uh I think we were on a red eye back from Vegas to Augusta or to Atlanta then on to Augusta one summer when he was coaching at BC and my bags got lost. I had no clothes to wear. So I went recruiting in a Boston College shirt. 
uh, 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 that day. He was nice enough to, to loan me a Boston College shirt, and I actually had it cleaned and delivered to him uh, after after that. But uh, 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 we're not close friends, but we're close enough to wear each other's clothes. So I I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, I wasn't concerned about getting him any, but but uh, uh, no, no, it was just for a day. What do you think of Iowa State and Charlie Moore being in the same four-team tournament this well, week? Well, I'm happy for TJ and Iowa State, and you know, probably more so for Tristan. You know, he gets the chance to play in the Sweet 16, and I'm really happy for for uh, for Charlie getting a chance to play in the Sweet 16. Uh, we've seen T. You know, uh, Iowa State could have beat us here. You guys all saw that game, and then Miami. Uh, they were in the tournament with us in Dayton. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, when we lost to Dayton in Orlando. And uh, uh, they're a totally different team now. I mean, that's, it's, it's unbelievable the job that they've done in Miami to, to flip that thing. I mean, uh, when they talk about uh, national coaches of the year, of course, TJ would have to be considered. Ed should be considered you know, winning the Big East. And then, but Jim, I, I, don't, I don't see how you could leave him out based on where they were and where they are now. Nobody, nobody would have predicted that. They've done an unbelievable job. Any questions from the Zoom? Yeah, Coach, I got one for you. Uh, Richmond had been a good three-point shooting team. We saw Gilliard in particular that first tournament game. I think as a group, they were one for 23 against Providence. What is it about their perimeter defense that made them so difficult to score? Well, I think uh, athletically, uh, as much as anything, I think they can get to shooters. They've, they've got they've got length on the perimeter in, in, in most all spots, uh, and uh, you know they, they're they're quick, they're athletic, and they they guard. You know, if you look at their defensive stats for the year, I, I forgot exactly what their three point defensive stats were, but I think they give up forty one from the field as a team, and and uh, they're going to guard and, and playing. Playing a team like Richmond, I guarantee Ed told them no layups, no threes, no layups, no threes. When you guard the Princeton offense, that's that's obviously a big key, and and they did a great job in both those areas. Phil, kind of a fun question for you. Playing in Chicago, you mentioned playing at the United Center when you're coaching Illinois. I was just asking some of the players about Michael Jordan being there, and the statues right outside the United Center, but they didn't really know about it, obviously, because they're too young for that. But just your memories of, uh, you know, Michael Jordan playing in Chicago and just just being able to watch that go down and, and, and everything that goes involved and how special it is to play at United Center because of who played there. Well, it's uh, – you guys may not know this, but I'm actually – in 1981, that was the year that, that Ewing and Mullen and Barkley and Jordan and Self all came out the same year. So, so uh, 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 I'm very familiar with, uh, with Michael. Uh, uh, you know, I know you asked those guys the question of, of maybe who the goat was or something like that. And, and uh, I think guys, re, uh, 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 depending on when they grew up, probably always lean a certain direction and there's not a right or a wrong answer. But, but from my perspective, when I grew up, I, I, I mean, I was a bird guy. I, you know, I love magic, but there, there, was, there was nobody like Mike. And uh, uh, so it, it is exciting. And uh, I wasn't actually in Champaign when Michael was playing. He had just retired. So I, I, I just missed out on that. But, uh, uh, you know, when you talk about the most popular athletes of all time, he'd have to be in, you know, he and Ali and Tiger and LeBron may be the four most popular athletes of all time. Hey, Bill, this is Jerry Tipton in Lexington. I wanted to ask if you guys win Friday, Kansas is the all-time leader in victories. I'm guessing that might be a potential distraction, but I'm wondering what it means to you to achieve that to to the Kansas program to Kansas fans. Uh, uh, Jerry, I'll, I'll be real candid with you. All that means to me is that we beat Providence. Uh, that's all that means to me. Uh, I, I, I think those type of things are great and can be a you know you could use for recruiting potentially. If, if you're ever in that position, I'm sure that Kentucky's used that over the years, uh, uh, which they should. And, you know, maybe if, if we could ever get there, maybe we could we could use it as well. But but I don't really think that what happens uh, now really has a lot to do with what happened in 1915 and 1935 and other years like that. So we, 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 did, we just hope that we we hope we become that. Uh, but for me and for our players, 
it's only because that meant we would have won one more game. Was a hey, bill. One other question for me was the, uh, you guys lost to Kentucky 80 to 62. Was that just one game, one adventure in a season of adventures or did that game have any sort of pivotal quality to it for you guys going forward? Well, I, I actually think that, uh, uh, that game was good for us. Uh, even if we were good that game, I'm not sure our good would have been good enough to beat their great that game. I thought they were fabulous. Uh, that game, they were by far the best team we played this year, uh, that game. And, and uh, uh, they didn't have a weakness that game. So, uh, uh, you know, I, I, was, I was disappointed because the stage was big. And, and of course, nobody likes uh, losing, especially at home when it, when it means a lot to your fan base. But, but I think that was good for us because it humbled us to know that uh, in order for us to compete at the highest level, which they were that day, uh, we've got to get a lot better in a lot of areas. So it, 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 was, it, was, uh, it was probably as important a game as we played this year. Uh, 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 I don't know we had some big wins, but I'm not sure any win was bigger or better for us than that loss was for us on that day. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. Coach, I got one about um, Jerome Lang. Uh, you would have coached against him all the years. Scott Drew, of course, was at Baylor. Uh, thoughts about him, impressions that you have, uh, relationship, contact, what can you tell us? Well, he's, he's going to do a great job. He's earned it. He's, he, he's earned to be a head coach many years ago and has, has waited it out and uh, uh, very patiently to, to get the, the, the position that he felt like was the best fit for him. And it was going to happen is inevitable. And, and uh, he's a great hire. He's a great hire. Uh, he's a good guy. I actually recruited one of his kids to Oral Roberts in like 1996. Uh, his name was Robert Johnson. So uh, I believe I believe Jerome was coaching at Christian Heritage or Heritage Christian, one of the two in Houston, and he was just getting his feet wet. And and uh, I was too, to be honest with you. So, uh, uh, but I'm happy for Jerome. I, I I left him a message today. Uh, his answer machine always said, it already said, what a great day to be a Wildcat. And I said, I beg to differ, but, but, uh, uh, but I am very happy for you and, and uh, look forward to uh, us getting a chance to spend some time together. But uh, it'll be fun. It'll, it'll be fun. It'll be competitive, and there'll certainly be battles. Anything else? I think so. Okay, thank you.